Hi, I'm Arie Schwartz, along with Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the WNBA Insider Show. Each week, we cover different topics important to the W, using X's and O's, along with key stats to bring honest and critical analysis. We're talking playoffs. Playoffs. Rachel, playoffs. Playoffs. And each week, it gets harder and harder to make predictions, and that's kind of what this show comes down to, us... uh, blabbling on and on so that we don't have to make the prediction then eventually we have to make the prediction because the time comes uh dream atlanta dream taking on the washington mystics i think the first thing that i look at when you're talking about a five game or best of five series um when in both these series honestly when i could see it very easily going either way the thing that i look at is coaching um and not say anything against coach t uh, in Washington, I the first thing that comes to mind thinking about this game just because of Atlanta's very staunch, very scary defense is giving Nikki enough time to plan for this Washington team. Um, or I guess just kind of plan about how she's going to go about doing certain things now that she doesn't have Angel. Uh, Rachel, your thoughts? Mm, great points. Um, I think it's definitely a big advantage with the dream. I mean, Nikki's done such a tremendous job with them and and them having an entire week, not just to rest, but to prepare and uh, get themselves ready to go for this is is a little bit scary, I would think. Um, But at the same time, you know, I mean, we're we're looking at two extremely well-coached teams right now. I mean, you know, Tebow's one of the, one of the best coaches in the league. So it's kind of like you're, you're sitting back and he's got, you know, an MVP candidate. She's not going to get it, but she are, you know has been an MVP on this, on the team, and so both both teams are are rolling right now. Both teams are. I mean, Atlanta Dream went fifteen and two um, the second half towards the end of the season, headed into this game right now, and Washington um, has won nine of their last ten. So both teams are playing at a really high level right now. Um, I mean, what what Washington was able to do to the Sparks the other night was just like they completely like routed them, <laughs> you know? And I, and I think we talked about it in our last show was that because of the sparks and kind of um, their wear and tear, or was that just the mystics kind of rolling um, at the level, level that they're rolling? And I think it's obviously a little bit of both, but, but they're playing at a really high level. And, and I think Atlanta is too. And your point about angel, I mean, you know, three games ago, uh, Atlanta lost, you know, their second leading score, 16 and a half points a game, six rebounds. That's, that's a major blow, but I think it's a really, it's really telling how they were able to respond. Um, that's, that's the thing about Atlanta. And I think why they have been so successful is kind of similar to the Connecticut sun. They're not a one or two or even three headed monster. They, they've got a dominant player in Tiffany Hayes and they've got other players around her that, are able to elevate their game to an extremely high level as well. So it's not a one man show. It's not a two man show. Really, any given night, um, play, players are able to to step up and do. They know their role. Um, there's a great support cast in there. There's consistency in Jessica Breland, and I mean Atlanta Dreams, <laughs> rightfully in that, that number two spot. And this is a really tough one for me. I mean, genuinely, it's it's a tough one for me to call how this series is going to go. Yeah, I, I'm. We're obviously we're we're stalling for time, but speaking about it, I mean, when I think about the Atlanta Dream, I think defense, and when I think about the Mystics, I think offense. So, do you think it's fair for for many people to kind of, well, historically, I guess when you have that offense versus defense, who wins, Rachel? It just depends, you know. I in my book, it's defense. Like typically, what like if they both play at their best. The defense wins well, in in that battle. I don't know what do you... in a, in a series. You now we're talking about a series. Yes. Um, where this is a single elimination game where you know the Mystics can get hot. Are we done with that? Right, right. Where the Mystics can get hot and hang a hundred on somebody. Um, to be able to do that for for three out of five games, you know that that's tough to do. And I think what Atlanta has proven through the course of this entire season is is I know they're ranked in in like the top three defensively. Um, they give up the third least amount of points um, behind the Sparks and Lynx this season. They give up 79 and a half points a game on average. But 
it almost seems like to me um, they are kind of the best defensive team because I think they, they've been kind of the most consistent with it. Um, and I think they've had the most success with it. And then I think you combine in that just their rebounding numbers too. Um, you know, they're, they're second in the league and in, in on the glass. And so that's how they've been able to sustain that defensive effort and, and continue to get stops and hold teams to one and done. And so in the, in, in the course of a series, you know, when, when you have to rely on your consistency, you know, you, you can't always rely on making shots. Um, you know, that that's a little bit of that luck that we were talking about uh, recently about, man, like teams are getting hot. Phoenix is playing really well. They're making a lot of shots, but you know, that, that's, that's that cliche. I mean, like everybody, you know, says like, like defense wins championships. So um, it, it's hard for me to, to look at the Atlanta dream and say anything else, because I think they've been one of the, the, if not the most consistent defensive team in the league this year. Well, yeah, exactly. It's like if Atlanta can can start scoring, then the question really is who can stop them because this team has the ability defensively to do so many things to so many different styles and so many different teams. I guess in my mind I'm thinking, all right, if Washington can legit – like, all right, I'll be the first to say this. I, I think Washington's a great team. I was even like sitting there while they were whomping L.A. and saying to myself, well, L.A. is not the greatest this year. And do I consider them championship contending caliber? Obviously, look, they're in the semifinals. They are. But last year, if you would have asked me before the series when they faced the Lynx, if they were really championship contending, I'd say no. Um, and I think for a lot of the season, and this is a fault of my own, I believe that again about Washington also. But And maybe this is a jerk move of me to say, like, if they can show me consistent defense in a series, that will say a lot to me and tell me whether or not I believe that this team is a legitimate contender. Because part of me, you know, really wants to say, my mind says that, that my mind says the dream are going to win. Not, you know what I mean? Like, but, but I, my heart wants to say mystics have that ability. You know, what's interesting is, is kind of taking it back to just kind of that offense defensive mindset. And you're like, man, if, if Atlanta can, can be consistent in their scoring and they can elevate their scoring, um, you know, here, here, it's like three games ago, they lose their second leading scorer, Angel McCautry, um, which is, you know, devastating and detrimental. Uh, but, but it like they have at times this season struggled scoring the basketball. Um, I think on the season they're averaging, like, I, I think it got better, um, through the second half of the season, but, uh, at one point they, they were one of the lowest in the league, but, um, they were averaging eight, 81.8 points a game. Okay, through the course of the regular season. The last three since Angel has gone out, they've averaged just over 91 a game, which that, that, that's telling to me, you know, like, like yeah. you, lo- you lose your second leading scorer, um, you know, an all-star and, and Angel McCautry and everything that she brings to the table for them. And, and like, I mean, that, that shows you offensively how well the Dream are playing too. So if they can keep that going, if they can keep that, that you know, scoring in the 90s and defending the way they can, I mean, this is uh, I, I, I don't I honestly I don't see how the Mystics can can hang on. Well, uh, yeah, it comes down to if TRP can give us that vintage TRP defense, what we're going to see from these players, because I really think it's going to be the ability for someone on Washington to step up and say, because all right, th- there's a few players that I just love their energy on the court and three of them are in this game. All right. Natasha Cloud, uh, Tiffany Hayes, and then Brittany Sykes. I just and and then another player who I put in that same realm of just like explosive wildness uh, just got bounced the other night in Courtney Williams. But to have three of these players for me, it's who can show up on the other end. Who's going to shut down? Uh, who's in on on the dream? Shut down Natasha Cloud. Who on Washington can shut down the explosiveness of TIP? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I'm with you. I think. I think that's kind of the matchup where it really comes down to because we know Deladon's going to go off at certain points. Mm-hmm. We know, you know, uh, Tiana Hawkins is going to ball out and do her thing. All right, we know. I uh, can we wait one second? I don't think it's got enough attention, but Atkins is just a fearless rookie. Oh, she's doing amazing! Oh my! Oh my god! <laughs> But honestly, like I had this, I had this moment the other night when I was watching her just womp on, womp on LA and I was sitting there and I'm like, okay, yeah, I know. 
All right, yeah, Diamond to Shields. Okay, I know Asia Wilson. But we're talking about a, a rookie who got a starting job mm-hmm. and is on a team and is starting for a team that's in the semifinals. Been- I get it, Asia Wilson had a great season, but, like, where's the respect there? I don't know. It, it, she's been really overlooked this entire season. That's a great point. I'm glad we're bringing it up. I mean, you know, she, she started, like – like 95 percent of their games this year averaging you know over 11 close to 11 and a half points a game I mean her her stat line as a rookie is is extremely impressive shot in the mid 80s from the free free throw line I mean she's she's out there doing like big time things <laughs> you know she she's not she's not acting like a rookie right now um and and so I I think that's a great point I'm really glad you brought that up <laughs> well I was just like the every time and you know Maisha Hines Allen has also played amazing, but not as she's had those rookie moments for basically the whole season. I've been like, damn, Atkins. <laughs> there's there's some diet joke there, but I, I won't make it now. Um, <laughs> Rachel, all right, it's the time has come. Uh, my predictions: I'm going with Atlanta Dream in five. They are admo- they are advancing. Okay, okay. Um, Dream are two to one on them. But I think Washington's figure it out and kind of has that 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 mojo. Um, EDD will make her second finals appearance in in four. In four, you're going Washington in four. Washington in four. All right. No, it's a lie. It's in five. <laughs> it's, wa- it's Washington. It's Washington in five. Um, because. Yeah, Atlanta's going to have a big game winner in game four in D.C. Oh, my God. Y'all heard it here. I'm calling it now. Calling it now. All right. Phoenix and Seattle, which is I, – I, I just need to do a little rant here, Rachel. Sorry. How – I, I part of me just wishes that we had a situation where these teams were meeting in the finals. No disrespect to Washington, no disrespect to Atlanta, both amazing. But in, in this bubble, I mean, to have the legends of Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi facing off in uh, like again in this in this folklore of being in the finals, that would just be beyond amazing for not just you know the diehard fans but also the casual fans who who know Diana Taurasi who know all this stuff about her about Sue Bird because these are names that transcend women's basketball and go to just you know what we all hope will happen soon enough in the league which is people just know these names as household names like if you ask your friends who don't know basketball they might know Elena Deladon they probably know Maya Moore they definitely know Diana Taurasi. And sure. to have then, like, kind of this new age also, I mean, I guess Brittany Griner's past that also. But then, I, Rachel, what do you think? I mean, I just – I feel like this – that as a finals would just be epic. It would be one for okay, the story. Well, I guess answer me this. Am I – am I being too outlandish to think that this is the finals? Hmm. See, all right. It's interesting. No, well, no, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. I know I said I think Washington's going to win it, but in my mind, when like I close my eyes and I go, okay, is the winner automatically going to win it? I feel like if Phoenix makes it to the finals, I got my money on Phoenix. Just because I, I feel like they may be like, okay. Yeah, Phoenix wasn't a contender last year, but the year before that, um, when Bonner was around, they were legit contenders. Um, And when you have that three-headed monster, they're kind of in that similar air of – many people forget this, and I constantly bring this up. Minnesota and, in my mind, Minnesota and the Mercury had a bigger rivalry because for more years there was a longer period of time. And, yes, the Lynx won mostly, but that they would face off in the semifinals – and everybody kind of knew, like you're saying, the winner of this is going to win the finals. So for me, like, they're that one other team that maybe when everyone's like, oh, the times have changed in the league, the times have changed. They're like, hey, the times have not changed. And we're kind of one of the last of the old guards that can stand up this year and say, 
sit well, down, young. Then it, sit and down. it's very well like might be Phoenix, Phoenix's best chance to go give them, you know, go get themselves another title. Um, my, my point of asking is this a final? Is we're looking at two teams right now in the Seattle Storm who have been clearly the most dominant team in the league um, this entire season so far, and rightfully so. Um, I mean, we we could go across the board and talk about the likes of Sue Bird and Brianna Stewart. You know, whatever. They're 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 light years. They have been light years above really everyone else, and just the way they've played, the way they've performed. Uh, but the Phoenix, I mean, especially the way they're playing as of late, they're, I mean, they're averaging like 101 points, <laughs> you know, in these last like five games, which is, which is insane. Just the level that the Mercury are playing at right now. I, you know, this is going to be just an a- absolute, like epic battle of the ages. I mean, there's so many neat storylines with it between De- Tarazi and, and Bird playing against each other. Um, the level that both these teams are playing at. I mean, this, this thing's going to be like, I think has like historic proportions to it, but you can't help but think like, you know, yeah, I wish these two could meet in the finals, but like whoever advances from this, you, you kind of like in my mind, and I, and I don't mean to, to really knock on Washington or, or the dream. I mean, they've done a tremendous job, but like whoever advances from this, like to me, I feel like is going to go win the whole thing. Um, obviously nothing is given. The games have to be played. Washington, you know, is the last team that's, that's even beaten the Seattle storm. So you know, like, I, it's just, you just get that feeling that that is how dominant these two teams are playing right now. Um, but I don't know. I mean, and, and I, I, I still don't even know who I'm going to predict to win it all. I'm just going to make a game. Well, that's the problem. Cause like in my mind, I could very well see if Deladon gets to another finals, and she has. I know she had a great cast before. There was injuries, whatever. But, you know, with Tolliver, Tolliver needs to be on for one game, let's say. Then you got Natasha Cla- Like, she has so many tools. Atkins also. I, I just feel like at that point, that's when EDD goes, like, super sane and just destroys everybody on the court. Uh, shout out to Shay. Like, just eyes, lasers, burns everybody nailing those bank shots. Oh my, I, I just need to give a shout out to EDD on one of the nastiest plays I've seen in a long time. She floated. She always floats. <laughs> she always floats, but that one float that she got her twice or three times, I'm talking about her as in Candace Parker, where she's running full speed and EDD, you know I've made this reference before, Peyton Manning-esque, where she does things in kind of slow motion at perfection and you can't stop her. And as a fan, you're like, or someone watching, you're like, what? How like how is she doing that? And so she's doing that, but like at a faster speed than normal. And out of nowhere comes CP. And as she goes for the SWAT, Deladon just kind of stops midair for a moment, does a little pump fake floater, backboard in yeah. buckets. She she like defies gravity. It's amazing. It was so <laughs> nasty. It was I I almost like you know, like you're sitting, you're obviously you're impressed. You're not like trying to react too much to the plays, but oh my god! I I I, I love Elena Deladon. I love her game. I I think she is one of the, um, if not arguably in certain ways, the, the most talented player in, in the world right now, um, and in women's basketball. I've said that from the beginning. Um, my my issue now that we're kind of getting a little bit off of the storm and and. Um, <laughs> sparks not sparks storm and whoever phoenix um is that i just i i I struggle with the consistency of washington at times uh maybe throughout the course of season and like in in some of that support support cast role in a series against a team like phoenix mercury or seattle storm that that's going to be extremely difficult for elena to sustain that that level of of play in the course of a series series against those teams but that's for another that is for another date um we will see that if they get to gets to that point uh but yeah back, back to phoenix and back to seattle this one this one's tough and i mean if to everybody out there who who loves um, sport and loves competition and just loves greatness. You are out of your mind if you do not tune into this series. That's all I'm gonna. Oh my god, I, I'm just. Here's the thing. This is a series where Jewel Lloyd could go to that next level. Here's a series where you have a young player who gets it in Jordan Canada, and she gets it because. She knows what her skill set is and what she's good at, and she does it so well, and she uses her energy, 
and she's just pesky on defense. And and to win championships, you need a player like that because you need those random hustle points. You need those random plays where the other team's like, man, they just made a basket that was kind of deflating. We're going to lollygag out of this inbound pass. And she'll, she's that player who's going to make a steal. Kind of that Renee Montgomery-esque player uh, who can get that spark and can make big shots. And then you have Sue freaking Bird. Yeah. What what could, what else could you want in I'm this telling series, you, it's Rachel? It's great. It's amazing. And and I think, you know, this is a th- these are two teams that have matched up uh 5 times a season. Twice in the preseason and then three times in the regular season. The last time they were at Seattle, they've only played there once this year in the regular season. Phoenix actually won it. Um 87-82. That was back in late May. Uh, the, the last crazy, two yeah. meetings were at Phoenix um with Seattle actually taking both of them. So Seattle has the has the edge right now in the regular season with two to one edge. Uh, but this this one, I mean, you you got to think this one's going to five. What do you think? Oh, it's definitely going. Um, all right, I, I I think I said this before when we were chatting and discussing this. If the Mercury win, I think it definitely goes to five. If Seattle wins, I I think it's one of two ways. Either it goes to five or it's three. And the reason I think that is because. Personally, I've been harsh on them, and I have kind of wanted to always be like, yeah, but there's, and I've said this very openly, like there's certain styles of teams that I feel like Seattle doesn't necessarily match so well up against. Uh, You know, I said it when it came to Lynx, even when the Lynx weren't playing their best, I think having Sylvia Fowles, a dominant true center, is an issue. Can Brittany Griner be that type of center against Seattle this series? Um but I just think there's there's also that element of they have been so dominant this whole year for basically every team in the league um, that I could very well see them just like plowing through, just bam, 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 I'm done. Let's go to the finals. Um, I'm going... Oh, hell, I'm not going to vote against Tarasi after those <laughs> last two games. because she's cause, Well, because she's got Bonner. Having Bonner really changes things for me. I'm going Mercury in five. You know, uh, this is tough. You know, I think, like, Seattle hasn't seen the Mercury. Um, one, with this lineup since Little went out. Um, and kind of the way that they're playing right now, they haven't had to face them um, kind of at this level. Um, I think it's going to go to five, and I, I'm I'm going to agree with you. I think – and I, this, this is so hard. This is literally so hard. It's hard for me to go against Tarazi right now. She's the complete and, – and even Duana Bonner. She she is uh, – the, the way those two are playing right now um, and what they're doing is is um, is, his, is like his, his, his historic. Uh, and it's, it's incredible to watch. So I, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Phoenix and five. Well, what? We agree. You <laughs> heard it That's literally twice first. in one week. Yeah, I know. But here's the thing. I'm going to completely flip-flop about five minutes before tip-off, just so everybody knows. No, because in all honesty, I could, ve- I wouldn't be mad either way. I could see it going either way. I just want both se- – and personally, I want both series to and, go And five. I think this – But I mean, if there was ever a year where that was going to happen, it's, it's this year. I mean, this is going to be – these are going to be hopefully just 10 incredibly competitive games at the highest level of, of women's basketball. I'm, I'm just – it's hard to predict. I love every team involved with it. I have so much respect for every team involved. Uh, it's, it's literally flipping a coin at this point. Um, and since we have to make a prediction and I'm usually wrong, I'll just throw someone out there. All right. That's legit. You know, well, this has been the WNBA insider show. I'm Aria Schwartz with Rachel Galligan, my amazing co-host guys, the playoffs are upon us. And that means there is more and more important things to talk about. So make sure to tune in every episode.